This is the very famous American artist, Andy Warhol. Andy Warhol lived from 1928 until 1987. He was an artist that made a kind of art called pop art. Pop art is a kind of art where artists made art about popular people or popular objects. Here are three artworks by Andy Warhol. You can tell when you look at these three pieces that Andy Warhol liked to change the color of a picture and use it again and again in his works of art. I want to share a book with you guys. It's called Uncle Andy's and it's by Andy Warhol's nephew, James Warhola. A fun fact about Andy Warhol was that he really loved cats. Can you see all the cats in this illustration? Looking back on those days, the one thing I remember most is thinking my dad had the best darn job in the world. Our yard was always so much more fun than anyone else's in the neighborhood. My oldest brother was already away at college, but there were still six of us at home. Dad had lots of jobs, but for now, he was mostly a junk man. Sometimes the neighbors complained that our yard looked like a junkyard. The real junkyard was about a mile away on a dirt road. It was up on a really steep hill. It had everything, old cars, old pop machines, and old airplane engines, you name it. It was there on the hill. Dad's job was to take things apart, separate the metals, aluminum, copper, brass, and steel. When there was enough, he loaded the truck and hauled it to another junkyard. Dad was always bringing home junk, and sometimes he'd say to me, Now, Jamie, this can really make good art. Then he'd put a bunch of it together in an interesting way. Mom was always yelling to Dad, For Pete's sake, Paul, quit junking up the house. And Paul, when are you going to get rid of this stuff anyhow? but we liked playing in the junk. One day, Dad came home from work and announced, it's time to visit Bubba and Uncle Andy in the big city. We'll leave tomorrow morning. Oh, we were so excited. It was not often that we got to visit our grandma and our famous artist uncle in New York City. We had a lot of getting ready to do. Dad had work to do on the car. Mary Lou and Eva had to make sandwiches. Georgie and I had to pack the car, and little Maddie and Marty, well, they didn't do much. They were just in the way. The next morning, Mom woke us up extra early, and we were finally on our way. We saw nothing but cornfields and cow pastures at first. Then, slowly, we counted the seven tunnels that would take us to get there. When we came to the last tunnel, we all perked up. All of a sudden, the world became very different. There were giant buildings, honking taxis, and people going every which way. Dad slowly wove his way uptown to Uncle Andy's. There we were, all eight of us standing in front of a huge black door ringing the bell. After a long wait, the door unlatched and slowly opened. Uncle Andy peered out for a minute and then let out a long, oh! Dad always thought it was best not to phone ahead so that it would be a surprise. It certainly worked. Uncle Andy was always very, very surprised. He showed us in, and we made our way to the kitchen where our grandmother was. Bubba drowned us with wet kisses, as she always did, and fixed us a dinner of salamis, breads, and cheeses. Soon, all the chattering and eating came to an end, and it was time for sleep. Uncle Andy showed us to our makeshift beds. I slept on the top floor on a propped up old door covered with cushions. In the morning, I noticed that I was surrounded by towers of soup boxes. I thought Uncle Andy and Bubba sure ate a lot of soup, but that wasn't it at all. Uncle Andy didn't buy those soup boxes. He built them out of wood and painted each one. They were art and really important too, because Uncle Andy told us not to touch any of it. Dad always remembered to bring Uncle Andy something interesting from the junkyard. This time, it was a giant magnet with a bunch of bolts stuck to it. Uncle Andy peered over his glasses at it real carefully. And after a pause, he said, oh, gee, wow. Then we knew he really liked it. He decided it should go right by the front door. Uncle Andy had 25 cats, all named Sam. They were always hiding in a house that was just like a giant amusement park. It was perfect for hide-and-go-seek and racing. 
It wasn't long before the six of us were flying up and down the stairs and through all the rooms like a band of wild monkeys. Uncle Andy thought everything was art in some way or another. That's why his house was so fantastic. Each of the rooms was filled to the brim with all sorts of neat things. There were always new things to see. Right in the middle of the entranceway, there was a giant piece of crumpled metal. It looked like it might have gotten stuck there and couldn't go any further. Uncle Andy explained to us, oh, that's a piece of fabulous art by a famous artist. We were impressed. Dad had a lot of that back home. Uncle Andy was always making art. We loved watching him paint in his studio. He made regular stuff like soup cans, pop bottles, and money look like real art. Mary Lou and Eva just loved his giant pictures of Elvis Presley. Mom, always aware of unnecessary clutter, asked, Gee, Andy, when are you going to get rid of this stuff? Uncle Andy, startled, said, Oh, no, this is art. It's going to be worth a lot of money. Mom didn't really understand art. With all of the commotion that we caused, Uncle Andy decided it might be better to put us all to work. It wasn't long before each of us had different jobs. He knew I liked to do art, so he let me help him with his giant paint-by-number sailboat painting. At night, Uncle Andy went out to parties to see other famous people. In the morning, we patiently sat by his door, waiting for it to open, so he could tell us all about who he had met. Once, Maddie surprised Uncle Andy by going into his room a little too early. He let out a shriek because he didn't have his wig on yet. Of course, we all knew Uncle Andy was bald, just like Dad and Uncle John. Uncle Andy had wigs for every occasion. Messy wake-up wigs, multicolored afternoon wigs, and formal wigs for parties. He had given Dad his old wigs, and back at home, we had a lot of fun with them. Each day was a chance to see something new. We especially loved hiding in the studio when Uncle Andy had important art people over to talk about his work. They would all huddle around the paintings, pointing and peering. They really thought Uncle Andy was on to something. I knew his paintings were super neat, and it made me want to do my own art when I got home. Finally, Dad announced, it's time to get on home. That night, we packed up all of our things. Again, Mary Lou and Eva made the sandwiches. Bubba added a few salamis. Uncle Andy was on his way out the door with one of his soup can paintings when I told him we had to leave in the morning. He replied, oh, oh, really? I have to go out and sell this picture to a man waiting at the corner. You know, he's the taxi cab king. He really likes my art. Then I'm going to a party. Oh, so have a fabulous trip. We went to bed early, and before I knew it, Mom was wiggling my toes and saying time to get up. Bubba helped us with our things, and we trudged into the dark morning. At the foot of the steps, there were a bunch of boxes that Uncle Andy had left for all of us, a lot of neat stuff, including art supplies for me. Bubba drowned us with those wet kisses as we got into the car. Soon we were weaving our way downtown to go through the first tunnel. We all fell asleep wondering about our next trip back to Uncle Andy's. As we got older, we made many more trips back to that faraway city, and Dad continued bringing interesting junk from the junkyard for Uncle Andy. I really liked doing art, and I learned that art is something that is all around us all the time. In the corner of my bedroom, I made an art studio of my own, and although Mom fretted and fussed as usual over what a mess it all was, she didn't make me clean it up. She even woke me up on Saturdays to drive me to art class. You know, I think Mom's finally understanding what art is all about.